So let's just remember it a little bit. DFS <clears throat> has the following pseudocode. You make a priority queue, sort by cost, by the cost numbers that are being associated with each vertex. Initially, the starting vertex has a cost of zero, and everybody else has a cost of infinity. So the priority queue is sort of trivially uh, sorted by oh, the only thing in it is the starting vertex. And as you walk through the graph, you visit the unvisited neighbors of the person you pull out of the PQ, and you put them back in with a cost equal to their cost to reach the current vertex plus the edge to the next vertex. And you're updating those costs as needed if you find a better cost than any cost that you've seen before to get to that place. And when you're done, if you ever get to the destination vertex, you know by the properties of this algorithm that you will have found the cheapest way to get there. So you are supposed to be keeping these previous pointers that point back from each vertex to how you got there, and you can follow them all the way back to the start. So we walked through this in detail, where we saw that eventually on this algorithm, on this particular graph example, the algorithm would find a path from A to F. The lowest cost was A, D, G, F. And we figured that out because once we visited F, we knew that its cost was 6 and its previous was G, and we just followed those previous pointers all the way back. OK, so that's one specific example. I want to look at at least one more example. Let's see, this is phrased as a Socrative question. So I guess I will ask it in that way. Let me close the sign up sheet thing. If you didn't sign in, you can sign in at the end of class. I'll put it up again. I'll ask a multiple choice question. So before I pop up the Socrative, let me just address what's on this slide. Dijkstra's algorithm is something that you call a greedy algorithm. It tries the sort of best local option first. Like, let's look at the next cheapest vertex that we haven't seen yet. Um, that's sometimes a good strategy for, for certain kinds of problems that you would want to solve. Greedy algorithms don't always work the best, but in this case, it does work well. When we finally find the destination vertex, we know that it will have the cheapest possible path because it was greedy along the way. Um, there's a couple of properties of the algorithm that make sure that that will be the case, that you can think about a little more. There's, there's, it's possible to reason more formally about this algorithm than what we would do in this class. That's certainly something you would discuss in a computer science course that was more of a theoretical course or an algorithm course. It's interesting to think about these things formally, try to prove that the properties are what we would say that they are. Um, let's do the Socrative question real quick. So here's another graph. And what I want to know is if I'm going from vertex E, <clears throat> then what would be the best path from E to H? Now, this might be kind of a crappy Socrative question, though, because I think it's a lot of uh, doodling and work to actually calculate the answer. But, and also, the other problem with it is you can kind of just cheat and look at the graph and figure out the right answer, can't you? How, how do you cheat and just figure out the answer that Dijkstra would produce? Sure, go ahead. What would you do? Find, find the lowest cost path. Yeah, just basically you'd guess and check all these four answers. <laughs> and whichever one is the cheapest one in terms of the sum of the cost, that's probably the right answer, right? So actually, this Socrative question is kind of shitty, so never mind. Just vote for whatever you want, I guess. I give up. I'm not asking it after all. Um, <clears throat> Whatever, I tried. Uh, well, OK, but then which one is it? Maybe, maybe we can do this in a different way. Let's just actually walk through this, OK? So I've got my pen here. And I would like people to help me kind of walk through the algorithm. We're doing a path from E to H, right? So I don't have a pseudocode of the algorithm in front of me, but I guess the goal would be that we just sort of understand what the algorithm is doing, and we don't need to like mindlessly read the pseudocode to trace the algorithm. Like, where does the algorithm start out? What does it do first? Like, if I were going to doodle some stuff on the graph to like keep initial state of things, like what kind of stuff would I doodle on here right at the beginning? What, do you have a suggestion? Yeah. Maybe an MQC with a cost of zero. So I have a PQ, not an RQ. Sorry, a PQ. And then right now, the PQ has uh, E with a cost of 0. That's it? OK. So maybe under the vertices, I'll write their costs. And everybody else has infinity. I'm not going to write down the infinities. OK, so I DQ E. 
And now I'm kind of I'm doing a pass of the sort of overall while loop of the algorithm. I DQE, and what do I do with that now? I can queue each of its neighbors, which are B and G, and B has a cost of 80 and G has a cost of 30, so the G comes first, right? So G, I'm sorry? Yeah, I'll mark E as being visited. I can't color very well, so I'll check it. G has a cost of 30 and B has a cost of 80. That's my priority queue, right? Okay, that's, that's it. That's all. Now we just repeat. We do it again. We remove G. We mark G as being visited. Oh, I can write these costs in here, right? 30, 80. So I DQ G. We repeat. In Q, it's unvisited neighbors A and D. In Q, A with cost of what? 50, 30 plus 20. So that would go in. I, I'm DQing G, so I'm going to erase that. I put in A with a 30, 30 come, or the 50. The 50 comes before the 80, right? So A with 50, that goes right here. And then D with 30 plus 120 is 150. So then there's D with 150, right? That's my PQ. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, what's up? Sure, that'd be fine. The, the marking, the diagram gets a little dirty, but like the G came from here and the B came from here. Maybe I'll, I don't want to lose the, I don't want to lose the ability to see the original edges. So maybe I'll just draw a little arrow like that. If that's okay with you. Okay, sure. And then the A and the D came from G like that. Okay, that's where we are now. We just repeat. We DQ the cheapest one, which is A. We mark A as visited. Uh, now what? For any... Uh, unvisited neighbor. So you have to be careful because we looked at B a little bit. We put B into the queue, but we haven't like visited B. You didn't visit B until you DQ it and check it off. We didn't do that yet. So we look at the, all the neighbors that aren't checked off, which would be B and D, right? So what did we find here? We found, like, what's the cost this way to get to B? 70, right? 30 plus 20 plus 20. That's better than our current cost for B, which is 80. Do you see that? So now that's where we update this thing. We say, hey, wait a minute, B, your previous shouldn't be E, your previous should be A, and your cost shouldn't be 80, your cost should be 70. So I'm going to go update that to say 70. There. There we go. <laughs> uh, if necessary, we would move B around in the priority queue, but I think it's already okay. It's at the front of the priority queue. It's still the cheapest one, I think. Oh, we didn't look at D. We could reach D with, what, 30 plus 20 plus 80. That's not... That's not as, as expensive as the old way, right? It's 50 plus 80 is 130, and we've got 150. So we update that one as well. So we say, hey, D, you should be visited from A, and your cost isn't 150, it's 130. So you get changed down here, too. I can't write very well, but... Do you, see, do you see kind of the process I'm, I'm following here? I mean, the next one would be we would DQ the B... And so we pull the B out, we mark it as visited. Any unvisited neighbors, hey, we have F. And F can be visited with, what, my cost was 70 plus 10 to get to him is 80. So I'm going to erase these just so I have space here. So I can visit F with a cost of 80. That goes into the priority queue. Okay, 80. The next, I guess, is F now, right? So we do F. We mark F as visited. We look at all the neighbors. Uh, we've got a new path to reach D with a cost of 80 plus 40. It, that's actually even cheaper than the cost we've got currently. So I think, again, I'm going to update D's previous to not be uh, A anymore, but to be F, and update the cost not to be 130, but to be 120, right? And so down here, this becomes a 120. I think what I'll do is just when I'm writing down the PQ, I, I won't write the priorities under. Uh, I just did F and then D was in there. So D is in there with, well, maybe I should write the priorities so I don't get the PQ out of order. D is in there with 120, but I have to add the unvisited neighbors of F, which is C. So that's 80 plus 70, 150. So C comes after in the PQ, right? C with 150. Repeat the algorithm. Let's do D now. And we finally visited D. 
And now any unvisited neighbors, well, we've got C with, we used to, we used to have C with a cost of 150 and a previous of F, but we're going to bust that by saying now it's 130 with a previous of D, right? So we go that way, 130, okay? Now I visit C, I enqueue the unvisited uh, neighbor of C, which is H, and that's going to be 130 plus 20 makes 150, and so H has a cost of 150. So if we were going to retrace the total path to get from E to H, which of the choices over there is it? It's choice C. It's the like really long one. <laughs> Basically, you have to visit all the vertexes to get the cheapest cost. I, pro I don't remember, but I probably made this graph up just so it would turn out that way, just because that's sort of a silly result that every the, the longest possible path turned out to be the cheapest one, I guess. Anyway, I mean, I guess the answer isn't so much the point as like understanding the process that the algorithm goes through because I want you to code that, so I want to make sure you understand it from a picture and just algorithm perspective. Do, do you guys understand it? Do you have a question about kind of what we were doing there? I think some of the more common bugs people make are misunderstanding what it means for a vertex to be visited. Like if I put it into the priority queue and give it a cost and stuff, I have not yet visited it. I have not visited it until I pull it out of the PQ and check it off. The difference between those two is often represented by the coloring in the graph. We color them yellow when they're in the PQ and green when they're finally visited. So when the algorithm talks about do this for all the unvisited vertexes, it's talking about ones that are either uncolored or yellow and not ones that are green. Another bug people have sometimes is that they forget to update their PQ. Like when I'm writing this up here on the, on the, on the slide, if I update the priority or the um, the cost to reach some new neighbor and it gets cheaper, I have to update my priority queue to reflect that. Sometimes that means I move around the stuff in the PQ. It reorders, right? So some students forget to do that. That's a pretty common bug. Okay, that's Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, that's yet another example. I'm not going to do that one with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> Dijkstra's algorithm is a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones. I'm not going to show you a very much of a, a, a evidence or proof that this is the case. It takes a little bit longer than BFS or DFS to run sometimes, but uh, it produces a different answer than BFS and DFS. And so sometimes you have to pay a little more to get a different result. Um, but it, that's still considered a pretty efficient algorithm. I think adding a logarithmic factor is not going to kill us too much here. And the fact that it's V log V or E log V or whatever, uh, has to do with the fact that we're using a priority queue, which has a logarithmic NQ and DQ runtime. If you don't use a priority queue and you just use like a vector and you go looking for the cheapest one to pull it out, that hurts you. And then your runtime goes up to like V squared or V times E or something like that, which is no good. So PQ is important to use here for this algorithm to run efficiently. 